Imagine two time periods when the skies were ruled by giants. Not just any giants, but two of the most formidable flying creatures to have ever soared the skies. Quetzalcoatlus, the feathered serpent from the late Cretaceous, and Argentavius, the magnificent pteratorn from the Miocene Epoch. These two titans, arguably most known from their appearances in Ark Survival Evolved, were separated by millions of years but will be put together in today's debate. You can pretty much say this debate is a shrinked up version of Rodan vs the Giant Claw, so let's figure out which one of these two will fly away with the victory. Starting off with Quetzalcoatlus. Quetzalcoatl, named after the Aztec feathered serpent god Quetzalcoatl, lived around 70 million years ago during the late Cretaceous period. He resided in North America, primarily Texas. This was one of, if not the largest flying animal to ever exist. I mean, Hatsagropteryx is a competitor and arguably more robust, but we won't get into all that. Initially, some studies suggested a remarkably low weight, with some placing it at 70 kilograms or 154 pounds for a Quetzalcoatl with a 10 meter or 32 foot wingspan. However, the perspective of its mass is significant significantly changed in the 2000s. This shift occurred with a 2010 study by everyone's favourite paleontologist known as Mark Winton. He indicated a much higher estimate ranging from 200 to 250 kilograms or 440 to 550 pounds. Winton's 2008 study also provided fascinating insights into this creature's size. Winton estimated that Quetzalcoatl stood around 3 metres or 10 feet tall at the shoulder, making it an imposing figure of both the air and the ground. These studies paint a picture of Quetzalcoatl not just being a lightweight flyer, but a truly gigantic and formidable predator of the skies. To be honest though, it's pretty insane that it was originally agreed upon that the Quetzalcoatl was around the size of a giraffe and yet had the same weight as the average person. But I'm sure you're all wondering, how could something so large even fly? Well, the flying capabilities of Quetzalcoatl has been widely debated since its discovery. In 2010, Mark Wheaton et al. used computer models to show that Quetzalcoatl could fly at speeds of up to 130 kilometers an hour or 80 miles per hour for seven to 10 days, reaching altitudes of 46 600 meters or 15,000 feet. They wanted to estimate that they could cover 13,000 to 19,000 kilometers or 8,000 to 12,000 miles. They argued that the overall structure of Quetzalcoatl demonstrated that it was a capable flyer. This was later tuned down to around 90 kilometers an hour or 56 miles per hour. But as always with science, things can't be simple. As a 2022 study by Yusuke Goto et al. Sorry if I mispronounced that, proposed that Quetzalcoatl flew only occasionally and for short distances similar to the ground hornbill, which cast a doubt on the long distance soaring abilities of this flyer. As for its takeoff, well it's been suggested that it may have used a similar method to bats with a quad launch involving utilizing their forelimbs to push them off the ground for liftoff. As for what it hunted with, well Quetzalcoatl was armed with one of the most formidable weapons which was both high quality and versatile, this being its beak. Despite lacking teeth, its elongated beak exceeded 2.5 meters or 8 feet in length and was incredibly powerful. Its beak structure was not built like your typical scavenger or water skimming animal. Studies on its anatomy suggest that this beak could deliver some pretty precise and dangerous strikes, making it a versatile tool for catching fish, small animals, or even scavenging. As far as its intelligence is concerned, its brain structure inferred from fossil evidence suggests that a high degree of sensory perception and coordination was crucial for navigating and for hunting effectively. This intelligence would have been vital for tasks such as identifying thermals for soaring. Additionally, according to Kevin Pedine's 1983 study, it had the ability to turn its head 180 degrees, enhancing its situational awareness. In terms of what our Quetzal would have to deal with, well that solely depends on where you want to place it. For this video, I'll be under the assumption that the indeterminate Azaka discovered in the Hell's Creek Formation was indeed a Quetzalcoatl. Examples of the organisms that it coexisted with includes Alamosaurus, Dromaeosaurus, Braviceratops, and other pterosaurs. Going with its existence with the dinosaurs in the Hell's Creek Formation, then this would expand including Tyrannosaurus rex, Triceratops, and Kylosaurus, and so on. The prevailing theory regarding Quetzalcoatlus's hunting strategy likens it to a stork. This titanic flyer would prowl the terrain scanning for prey before executing swift and lethal strikes with its elongated beak. Given its weight estimates being around 200 kilograms, it was unlikely that it would try to take down the colossal dinosaurs in direct conflicts as they were dwarfed by more than seven times. Instead, this flyer would have likely focused on smaller and more manageable prey options such as small mammals, reptiles, and young dinosaurs. Being opportunistic and adaptable, it might have also hunted ornithopods and dromaeosaurs, and even fish from the inland waters, relocating as water sources dried up. As for interspecies interactions, Quetzalcoatl would have faced classic confrontations over resources, territories, and mating rights. Its imposing wings and formidable beak were not just tools for hunting, but also intimidating rivals. Should intimidation fail, physical conflicts would ensue. This might involve snapping of the beaks akin to the scene vividly brought to life through the interpretation of prehistoric planets. 
So clearly the Quetzalcoatlus is a powerful opponent, but will the heaviest flying bird be able to handle it? Argentavius, named after the Latin word for Argentina and Avis meaning bird, soared through the skies around 6 million years ago during the late Miocene epoch. This giant bird native to what is now South America is considered one of the largest flying birds to have ever existed. Straight off the bat, it is known that Argentavis is the heaviest bird around, maybe not having the widest wingspan as that goes to Pelagonus, but still the heaviest flying bird nonetheless. Initially thought to reach 7.5 to 8 meters or 24 to 26 feet, recent estimates suggest they had a slightly smaller wingspan of around 5 to 6.5 meters or 16 to 21 feet. On the ground, Argentavius stood about as tall as a person, being 1.8 meters or 5.9 feet, and it measured approximately 3.5 meters or 11 feet from head to tail. Current estimates place a range of 70 to 72 kilograms or 154 to 158 pounds. Now, while yes, it's definitely outclassed by the Quetzalcoatlus, this is still a massive bird. As for its flight, well, Argentavius likely relied on soaring rather than continuous flapping due to its immense size. Similar to modern day condors or vultures, it used atmospheric energy from thermals over the Argentinian pampas and slope soaring along the windward slopes of the Andes for sustained flight. According to a 2007 study, Argentavius is renowned for its exceptional gliding abilities, with Argentavius having a gliding angle close to 3 degrees and cruised at around 67 kilometers per hour or 41 miles per hour. Takeoffs have been hypothesized to be facilitated by running down hills or launching from a perch to gain flight speed, although there have been some hypotheses which suggest that its sturdy hind limbs made it strong enough to propel itself into flight. Argentavius not only had its formidable size and flight capabilities, but also possessed a classic set of weaponry. Despite being equated to modern day condors or vultures, it was equipped with an eagle-like beak. According to Mark Winton, it seems that the bird's talons were not as useful as its modern day relatives in relation to direct combat. Instead, they had longer, more sturdy legs which enabled them to traverse the ground more effectively. There hasn't been an awful amount of research on the Argentavis' intelligence, so I'll be comparing it to its modern day relatives. Akin to modern condors and vultures, it likely possessed intelligence and sensory capabilities adapted for its environment. These types of birds are known for their keen eyesight, which allows them to spot food sources from great distances while soaring. They also exhibit sophisticated navigation skills, enabling them to effectively cover large territories in search of food. It's hard to say exactly what intelligence level that the Argentavis would have been at, but I think it would be around the same as modern day eagles, vultures. You might even argue that since it was so much larger, it may have been even more intelligent, but brain size doesn't always equate to intelligence. It likely targeted prey options such as Megaplodius, a stem flamingo, as well as young giant ground slots, rodents, and even armadillos. These hunting behaviors would have required a strategic approach and keen predatory instincts. In terms of competition, our giant bird coexisted with some formidable predators. This included Thylacosmilus, a saber-toothed Mediterranean mammal which weighed between 80 to 150 kilograms or 176 to 330 pounds. Additionally, Argentavis may have overlapped with a member of the Derwinsia genus, a member which Argentavis may have had to deal with, grew up to 2.5 meters or 8.2 feet at the head, and possibly weighed up to 3 150 kilograms or 771 pounds. Competition between these two would have been intense as you have the heaviest flying bird against one of the largest terrestrial birds. We also can't forget the intraspecies conflict which would have occurred between Argies and alike to the Quetzal would be over food, territory, and mating. They would go through a similar route trying to intimidate each other before engaging in combat. Though I think that their feet would be a lot more useful compared to the Quetzalcoatlus. Although they are still undeveloped for hunting, they could still assist in gaining a grip of the opponent before delivering some attacks with their beaks. Overall, Argentavius is no slouch. And though it might be smaller than the Quetzalcoatlus, it should not be underestimated. Now that we've gone through each opponent, let's see who takes which categories. Quetzalcoatlus takes height, length, weight, travel speed, weapon quality, and experience. Meanwhile, Argentavius takes agility, weapon quantity, reaction speed, intelligence, battle IQ, and senses. I'd argue stamina could be around equal as there's a continuous debate about Quetzal being a long or short distance flyer. For this debate, we'll be using a 200 kilogram Quetzalcoatlus with a 10 meter wingspan against a 72 kilogram Argentavius with a 6.5 meter wingspan. When this battle takes place in the skies, Quetzalcoatlus's immense size and speed provides it a significant advantage, allowing it to dominate the airspace. Argentavius being smaller would have to rely on its agility and exceptional gliding abilities to evade the Quetzal's attacks. Its superior maneuverability helps it to stay aloft longer, avoiding direct confrontation and waiting for the right moment to strike. However, Argentavius' lack of effective talons, unlike modern day raptors, means that it would struggle in grappling making a beak-to-beak -beak fight inevitable. 
In such a scenario, Quetzalcoatlus has a far larger beak being over 2 meters long. It has too much range and hence it would absolutely win. On the ground, this battle becomes a lot more interesting as both opponents are somewhat adept to terrestrial movement. Argentavius with its stalk-like pelvis and powerful legs makes it well suited for sustained terrestrial activity, almost resembling a flying terror bird. Quetzalcoatlus, while capable on land, might find it challenging to match the Argentavius' agility and speed. Its long wings and asset in the air could hinder rapid maneuvers on the ground. Argentavius could exploit this agility advantage by landing some bites on the Quetzalcoatlus' forelimbs. I mean, could the RG take the win? Think about it. Eagles are known for taking down animals 10 times their own body weight. So are we saying that the Argentavius couldn't do this? Well, I think a big difference with comparing Argentavius to modern day birds is how they're built and their hunting strategies. Eagles typically soar high before diving, aiming for the head and using their powerful talons to grasp and subdue prey. The targets usually grounded and have limited means to counterattack. In contrast, a confrontation between a Quetzalcoatlus and Argentavius would be more dynamic and complex due to their unique adaptations. Difference is, the Archie was built for terrestrial movement and hence we can't say that it would fly up, dive and take out the Quetzal. With taking everything to account, the Quetzal still picks up the victory. The Quetzal being more bulky means it can sustain more damage, it had to deal with a greater diversity of organisms ranging in size and really, unless the Archie was able to surprise attack it, it doesn't have the required output or range to take down the Quetz. In a face to face showdown, the Quetzal Quetzalcoatlus would attain the victory in both the sky and ground at a mid difficulty. Ultimately, the prehistoric flying reptiles remain the king of the skies. Anyways, we've reached the end of the video and I hope you'll enjoyed. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll catch you all in the next video. See ya.